Recent social media claims say that GameStop should be valued over $50 a share today, or they focus on non-standard valuations like looking at cash versus the share price or book value. But where is the math? In today's video, I'll use a discounted cash flow model to show you exactly what GameStop is worth today. Cutting through that social media hype and focusing on facts using math. I understand the desire to push $50 per share price targets that we see out there on social media. I understand that it comes from excitement about GameStop's potential. And I do think the company has a lot of potential, but those price targets often lack the math that professionals or analysts rely on. Whether you're a trader or a long-term holder, just curious about GameStop's value today, this video is for you. Before we begin, just a full disclosure. Although DCF is not a price target, I do use it to guide my analysis of the company and guide my trading decisions. I am a swing trader of GameStop. You might not be, and that's cool. Meaning that I like to buy low, hold for short periods, and then sell into run-ups. I currently hold a position in GameStop long at about $21.61. I have been profitably trading GameStop for many years, and my valuation of the company has changed over the years, as would be expected with a company like GameStop that is continually driving for operational improvement. Don't ever remain static in your analysis, guys. You can count on the fact that I will not ever remain static in how I analyze any play. Take the current situation and change your perspective or your due diligence as needed. If you're not familiar with the concept, you might be asking yourself, what is discounted cash flow analysis? And very simply, it's a standard tool taught in corporate finance college courses or advanced accounting, which estimates a company's fair value by forecasting cash flows and discounting them with a rate that reflects time and risk. Kind of like uh, calculating a future paycheck's value today. When we talk about discounted cash flow and a fair value price analysis, there are always people that misunderstand or misconstrue it as some sort of price target. So allow me to attempt to clarify one additional time here in this video. A discounted cash flow fair value price is not a price target. Rather than letting people sidetrack you telling you that it is a price target, I want you to think of it as a snapshot of what the company is worth today. Not a prediction of where the stock will go, but a guide to help you understand whether a stock is under or overvalued compared to its current market price. Understanding a fair value model will also answer the commonly asked question that we hear out there on social media. How are these analysts coming up with their fair value price? I don't understand it. Hopefully by the end of this video, you all will understand it. As we get into the model here in a second, I just want to make clear the purpose of this video is not to teach you how to do a discounted cash flow analysis. That would take far too long. I would highly recommend that you go to your local college or community college, take a corporate finance class, go to a website like Khan's Academy. They offer free finance and accounting classes, and you can learn a little bit more about calculating discounted cash flows from one of their courses or go to Amazon right now and order this book. It is called The Little Book of Valuation. And this will help you in your educational journey to learn how to properly value stocks and alleviate a lot of the questions that I hear about valuation out on social media. A long time ago, I put together my own discounted cash flow model for GameStop for my own analysis and to share some insights with folks in my Discord and uh, to help guide our GameStop trading analysis. So now let's move on to reviewing what the model shows. And if you have any questions or you spot any errors, please always feel free to leave me a comment down below. I have done my best to make this analysis error-free and subject to a variety of different 
assumptions. So we have some ranges of stuff to look at. And I've had a couple of finance and accounting folks look at it to help me do my best to present you accurate information. But if you spot any problems or have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment down below. Every DCF model starts with your assumptions. And so let's begin looking at this model by taking a look at the assumptions. Some of these assumptions may vary depending on the company that you're analyzing. And here, as an example for GameStop, we're primarily looking at the revenue growth rate or declining revenue rate uh, for the case of GameStop. The WACC, which is the weighted average cost of capital, and the terminal rate. These all might be numbers which you might want to vary on your own analysis. Revenue growth is how much sales might rise or fall annually. Weighted average cost of capital is what we call the discount rate, which reflects risk related to the investment. And finally, the terminal rate estimates the long-term growth of the company's free cash flow beyond the five-year period that we're modeling here. In this model, we use these assumptions and data from the company provided in its financial statements, the 10Qs and the 10Ks, to then compute the present value of future cash flows. And in my model, I've also, because GameStop has such a huge pile of cash, which is generating interest income, I've gone ahead and computed the present value of future interest cash flows. And then I combine those into a total present equity value. We divide it by the current shares outstanding, and we get a discounted cash flow DCF valuation per share for GameStop. Using the assumptions given the model is outputting a fair value price of GameStop based on the present value of future cash flows and future interest income of $15.59. And then you can see over to the right, I have provided a sensitivity analysis, which we can model uh, various other assumptions about revenue growth versus the discount rate. For example, if the revenue growth was negative 5% and the weighted average cost of capital was 9%, we get an increase in the uh, valuation per share up to $16.09 in the top left-hand corner of that green table at the bottom. I want to get into some common questions before we wrap up this video, but in regards to that calculated price of $15.59, I want to reiterate that it reflects GameStop's current financials, including declining retail sales and the risk around that. And while management's collectibles pivot or cash reserves could certainly uh, improve future prospects, those future prospects are still speculative and not yet reflected in today's numbers reported by the company. Discounted cash flow analysis, which is commonly used by analysts, only uses confirmed financials and not unproven or speculative plans like future Bitcoin investments or acquisitions that the company might make. And that might explain some of the difference between your ideas about the value of GameStop and an analyst's valuation of the company. As the company is undergoing rapid change at the direction of management, Future results may vary and investors' assessment of the future value of GameStop may also be different than the result shown on the screen here, and that is perfectly fine. But what a DCF model tells us is finance math, basics that everybody in the industry is taught of what GameStop is worth today based on its current cash flows, its cash balance, and the way that GameStop is investing its cash. This model also helps explain, as I said, why the uh, Wall Street analysts might value GameStop at $14 below the current market price, uh, driven by more speculative investors buying the stock on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm gonna put up five common questions, and if you have other questions, feel free to ask them down below, but let's try and knock these out because I think some of you guys are gonna be asking these questions. Why is $15.59 the fair value? And why is it lower than the market price of $23.33 as of Friday's close? 
Just remember guys that the fair value analysis is based on GameStop's current situation. It's declining revenues and conservative math. These are non-emotional, non-speculative math formulas that every finance and accounting professional knows how to use. The current price out there in the market of GameStop in addition to the fair value reflects what I often refer to as speculative value and an adder on top of the fair value. And that is based on different factors like social media sentiment or people's expectation of a short squeeze or even people's anticipation of a future acquisition, a future use of that cash. Discounted cash flow and what you often see reported from analysts ignores all of that speculation. Second question, what about GameStop's $8.6 billion of available cash uh, or its acquisition plans? And just to reiterate, that cash reserve is included in this discounted cash flow analysis. I've done my best to assuming GameStop made no changes and just kept investing their cash in uh, short-term treasuries. Uh, that is included in the analysis. The use of that cash, as I said, for future Bitcoin purchases or acquisitions is uh, promising. I'd like to see it. But since it is speculative, it is not included in a discounted cash flow model or more than likely not included in any professional analyst's price analysis of GameStop. Number three question, why do analysts continually undervalue GameStop? Analysts focus on actual data and fundamentals, things like revenue, revenue growth rate, cash flows, and risk. And management communication also goes a long way. Market prices out there, like $23.33, can often be higher than a fair value analysis due to speculative trading or social media sentiment. But discounted cash flow, fair value analysis reflects what the numbers from the company show today. Fourth question, and I get this a lot on different tickers, not just GameStop. Does the fact that you're long GameStop, the fact that I own it, change or bias my commentary to you guys? My long position in GameStop, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, is around $21.61. It's part of a swing trading strategy that I've employed for many years on GameStop, short-term uh, swing trades, buy cheap, sell into run-ups. But the discounted cash flow model that we see here is based on objective financial data, not subjective wishes, not speculation, not people yelling at their camera. It is objective financial data that nobody really can argue with. Cash flows, growth rates, and risks. We might have different uh, assumptions about what percentage of each of those might be, and that's fine. That's why you have a model. You can easily tweak those things and see how it changes your outputs. I just keep it simple. I aim to buy at a price that fits my own risk assessment and my trading strategy, and then sell into run-ups. And the DCF model helps me understand how the market is looking at GameStop, what the fair value uh, price is, and what the speculative uh, adder on top of that is helps me identify speculative opportunities that are at my own risk tolerance. And it also helps me identify when is the price of the stock getting far above fair value where it makes sense for me to think about taking an exit on this swing. Fifth and final question before we wrap this up, why do some people say that GameStop's worth $50 a share, $100 a share, $1,000. I heard someone say $3,000 a share. Coming up, they promise, they guarantee you. Uh, we'll be checking the calendar on that guarantee, my friends. Those claims, my friends, rely on speculative assessments of the future. And I have no problem with speculative assessments. I do it often myself in many tickers. But you cannot confuse a speculative assessment not backed up by any real math or evidence with a discounted cash flow analysis or uh, what the analysts are looking at, which is often based on a DCF model. You cannot confuse the two. And, and for those of you who remain confused why Michael Pachter keeps coming up with these low price targets, 
I am quite certain it's because he's using a DCF model and not giving any value to your speculative wishes. A discounted cash flow ties fair value to the numbers reported by the company today. And just to be clear, that doesn't mean that he's wrong and it also doesn't mean that you're wrong. It means that you're trying to compare two different models of analysis and since one is based on data and one is speculative, they're never going to meet. Just understand how the analysts do their job and how Wall Street is looking at fair value. And I think it will help you in analyzing this trade. If this video helped clarify in your minds, at least even a little bit, how analysts and Wall Street might be currently valuing the fair value of GameStop, please smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you learned something new today as well, and join my Discord to learn more about trading. Do not miss my next GameStop video, which will go over another way that I analyze GameStop, one that has become more popular now that the company has uh, been investing in Bitcoin, and that is a sum of the parts analysis, a completely different way to model a fair value price for GameStop. I have that available for you and it will be coming up on the next video. So make sure you have your alerts turned on. If you think that GameStop is currently worth today $50 or more per share, please drop me a comment down below and be sure to share your math. I'm all ears and I'd love to hear what you have to say. To learn more about discounted cash flows, as I mentioned earlier, check out Khan's Academy for a free resource on the internet or order yourself the book titled The Little Book of Valuation. I am Tony DeNaro. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.